Anxiety and depression, as well as substance use disorder, are the most common mental illnesses with which Americans are struggling. More than 30% of adults say they have symptoms of anxiety and depression. That's according to the Kaiser Family Foundation. Meanwhile, 20% of young adults between the ages of 12 and 17 reported having a major depressive episode. The survey also shows drug overdose rates have increased by nearly 50% over a two-year period. Now, those nationwide numbers are startling. However, what's happening right here in our own backyard? We talked with first responders and leaders in the mental health field to see where the state of Pennsylvania's mental health infrastructure currently stands. Pennsylvania is in a crisis, years in the making. A lot of people are in somewhat of a denial that mental health affects their communities. Nate Herrig has been with Cumberland Goodwill EMS in the Carlisle area for more than 20 years. He's well aware of the issues that have been plaguing Pennsylvania's health care system. So a lot of people, when we encounter them in crisis, we take them to an emergency room and they're held in that emergency room until they can find bed placement to kind of get them the psychological help that they need. There's no beds in Pennsylvania, uh, especially in this immediate area. So we're regularly driving to Clarion uh, in Pennsylvania. We're regularly driving to Philadelphia area just because there is nothing locally that we can really provide for these patients who um, they just need a little bit of mental health uh, counseling. Leading up to the COVID pandemic, access to mental health care varied across demographics. Now, nearly 32% of adults report feeling symptoms of anxiety and depression, with about 23% saying they have unmet needs for counseling, according to the Kaiser Family Foundation. We talked to Herrig two years ago during the height of the pandemic about the lack of care, and this is what he had to say. Here in Pennsylvania, we're beyond crisis. We're at neglect. When asked how the situation is now two years later. And it still hasn't gotten better. It's still the stress of life just isn't being dealt with, and the pandemic really amplified it. And when mental illness treatment needs go unmet. When they are in the throes of a crisis, it can lead to, at best, a, an arrest and a criminal prosecution, and at worst, it can lead to a serious altercation. Patients in the middle of a mental health crisis could at times run into law enforcement instead of EMS. That's why in your county, area leaders continue to build out the co-responder program. We uh, help people that are in an immediate or emergent crisis, they're either suicidal, homicidal, psychotic, have substance abuse issues. Angie Alvarez was your county's first co-responder and helps police engage and work with people who are in a crisis. She has helped grow the program to several municipalities in the last two years. I always call it being in survival mode when you're out there on an actual scene and they're in the middle of the crisis. You just do what you need to do to help that person get through um, and make sure everyone's safe. And your county officials say it's working. And out of that, 899 contacts, only 1% led to an arrest. Only 1% of individuals were arrested. That's highly successful. The co-responder program is a collaboration with WellSpan Health. It started with York County Regional Police and Spring Garden Township, and now has expanded to 11 police departments, including two in Adams County. Barker says the program isn't meant to replace law enforcement, but to help them better understand the community they're serving.